Chapter 18. My body quivered with horror. I stared at the figure in the moonlight until my eyes blurred. Was Haywood dead? Was he one of the corpses he hid under the pumpkin field? <clears throat> I hate zombie movies. I think they're really dumb, but uh, I but here I was living in one. <clears throat> and I and suddenly I remembered I remembered asking Haywood where he lived. And when I asked, he pointed at the pumpkin field. He said he lived there with his dad, a lot, and a lot of other people. Now here he came, brushing off the dirt from his grave, walking towards the grass uh, from the backyard, promised to slow vines, walking toward the house, and because I had invited him, I had begged him to come to, to come tonight to help me. But he wasn't coming here to help me. What was he planning? I tried to hide. I too late to run. I pressed myself against the darkness into the black wall. I held my breath. My heart beat so hard my chest my chest ached. Devin, I can see you, Haywood said. Are you hiding here? I've come to help you. I didn't move from, from the wall. No, no thanks, I stuttered. I don't want your help anymore. Thanks anyway. Yes, you do, he said. You need my help. No, I uttered. Actually, I screamed at the word. I couldn't hide the panic. I came to help you, he repeated, because you are my friend. I know a lot about this farm, Devin. I know to keep the keep the people keep people safe. He stepped into the shadows, and I, I hugged myself and stopped trembling. I, I'm going inside now, I said. I'm tired from carrying all those pumpkins today. Let me um, come in with you, he whispered. I have some things to tell you, important things, Devin. No, really, I'm too tired. Maybe tomorrow? I couldn't see his face. The shadows in the, at the back of the house, but they were too deep. It's Halloween night, he said. These are things I need to tell you to keep you safe on this farm. My brain was spinning. How would I? How could I escape him? I'd seen him climb from under the ground. I knew he's some kind of zombie. I moved closer. I heard him chuckle. <laughs> Devin, you look so frightened. Huh? Me? No way. I protested, but my trembling voice gave it away. Why are you shaking? He demanded. It's it's cold out there. I said. His next words came to the shock down my whole body. It's colder than the grave, Devin. He grabbed my wrist and jerked me forward. I nearly fell, do fell over. His hand tightened around my wrist. I felt um, it felt like a cold metal clamp. I tried to pull free, but it was incredibly strong. Colder in the grave, he repeated. Let go of me! What, what do you want? My voice came out high and shrill. I want, to, I want you to come with me, he said softly. His bone-hard fingers dug to my skin at the wrist. I want you to come see my grave. No, let go, let go. A panic shot up through my body. I twisted and squirmed. Let go. But it wasn't too stir. But but I was wasn't strong enough to break his cold, his hold. He turned and and, uh, and started to pull me across the wet grass. I struggled against him, but he was just too powerful. Stop! I cried. I don't want to see your grave. Let me go. He, he turned his eyes into where he were glassy, empty like a doll's eyes. It doesn't hurt, he said in a whisper. Does it hurt? What does it hurt? I cried. It doesn't hurt to die, Devin. You'll see. No, please. He began pulling me again, forcing me over. The grass towards the field, gripping with a steel-like hand, pulling with horrifying strength. He's going to pull me into his grave. I twisted back, back towards the house. I tried to show for my parents, but the windows were shut. Against the cold, the lights were all out. Everyone was asleep. No way everyone could hear my feeble, feeble cries. He would pull over the vines, which were twisting together. And curling and uncurling as I passed, uh, they reached up to grab me, but he, he tugged me out of their reach. I'm doomed. I realized that no one could save me, and he was too strong for me to save myself. I opened my mouth to shout again, but still there was no one around. No one could help me. And then my eyes fell on a dark figure at the edge of the field and realized a tiny little hope left. Zeus! I shouted. 
Zeus, you're the grave master. You can help me. The cow tilted his head to my words. His green eyes caught the moonlight and started to glow. Zeus, I know who you really are. I know you're controlling everyone here. Zeus, please help me. Stop Haywood. Stop him. The cow lowered his head and he took a step towards us and another. Haywood turned to face him. Yes, I cried. Come stop him. You're the grave master. You can do it. Help me. Help me, Zeus. The cat took another step towards us into the leafy field. He raised his head and his eyes glowed brightly. Says Haywood, get him, Zeus, I screamed. I held 